Good evening. Thank you for joining us tonight to reimagine South Davis Neighborhood Park. My name is Emily Ander. I'm a park planner assistant with the city's recreation and parks department and also the project manager for this project. Tonight's Zoom meeting hosts are Elisa Rawson and Madeline Brown. The hosts will coordinate comments from the public, assist during the meeting, and take notes for any follow-up needs. Panelists and presenters, please silence your cell phones and keep microphones muted unless you are speaking. Interpreter services are being provided in Spanish for tonight's meeting. Can our Zoom host explain how that will work? Yes, thank you, Emily. Live interpretation can be heard on the Spanish channel. You can join the Spanish channel by clicking on the interpretation icon in the Zoom toolbar. It looks like a globe. At the time questions and answers and public comment, the interpreter on the panel will be prepared to assist anyone needing interpretation. It is recommended that you shut off the main audio so you can clearly hear the Spanish interpretation. Additional instruction will be given at that time. Emily, back to you for additional housekeeping for today's meeting. Thank you, Elisa. As members of the public join the meeting, you will be particip participating as an attendee. Your microphone will be muted and your camera will be off. Only today's presenters will be viewed during the meeting. If you are calling in from a telephone, either a smartphone or a landline, for privacy concerns, the host will be renaming, renaming your viewable phone number to citizen and only the last four digits of your phone number will show. Once our informational presentation concludes, I will move to item four on the agenda, questions and answers and public input. At that time, I will ask that you raise your hand in Zoom if you have a question. Our Zoom host will move one by one down the list of attendees with their hands raised. Once you have asked your question or shared your input, the Zoom host will lower your hand. If you heard your question asked and answered, we ask that you lower your hand so we can move through as many questions as possible. There is also the opportunity to ask questions and provide comments throughout the presentation by clicking the Q&A feature in your Zoom toolbar. And we already have a comment. Um, so you can type in your question or comment and the hosts are going to monitor the questions and comments. Um, all the questions that we received in, in the Q&A feature will be read aloud and addressed during the Q&A section um, at the end of the meeting after the presentation. So, and that is so that all attendees benefit from the information. Additionally, the city of Santa Rosa is committed to providing a safe and inclusive environment free from disruption and will not tolerate hateful speech or actions. Everyone is expected to participate respectfully or if necessary, the meeting will end immediately. Next slide, please. Tonight is all about providing you with background information on the park and the city's master planning process so that you know what we know. As you can see from the agenda, we'll introduce the project team discuss the project background and project process, provide history and context about the park, and most importantly, we'll hear from you. Next slide, please. Um, first, I'd like to um, introduce the project team. Next slide, please. Um, when I say your name, if you could wave. Um, the project team is made up of Santa Rosa staff, um, including myself and um, as I said earlier, park planner assistant and project manager, and also Jen Santos, our parks de de deputy director. Um, and there are, of course, people in the background that, that support us as well. Um, and there's also our design consultant, Carlisle Macy of Santa Rosa. Brianna Morrison is the project manager and landscape architect, and she is working closely with Rochelle Stewart, who is the civil engineer and who is an attendee um, on, on the call right now, we're on the meeting right now. Next slide, please. This map shows the city limits of Santa Rosa. 
The city divides itself into quadrants based on the intersections of highways 101 and 12. South Davis Neighborhood Park is located in the southwest quadrant, which appears in green on this map. It is south of Highway 12 and west of Highway 101, therefore southwest. South Davis Neighborhood Park is indicated on this map by the pink star. Next slide, please. You may be wondering where the funding for this project comes from. The first source of funding is a grant from California State Parks per capita program, which is funded through um, Proposition 68, uh, which is also known as the Parks, Environment and Water Bond Act of 2018. $285,291 has been set aside for the city of Santa Rosa to replace the playground equipment at South Davis Park. Because the project is grant funded, it must be complete, aka fully constructed and open to the public by December 2023. Although we will be updating the master plan for the entire park through this public engagement process, we will only have funding and time to replace the playground and related amenities. The remaining project funding comes from park development impact fees. What are park development impact fees, you may ask? Well, city policy requires developers to provide a park as part of their development, or they may choose to pay the city fees in lieu of providing a new park. These fees are then used by the city to acquire new parkland, construct new parks, and renovate existing parks. The fees must be used in the zone they were collected in, aka where the development occurred. This slide shows the city's park development impact fee zones. There are four zones. Each zone corresponds to a quadrant of the city. The northwest zone is number one, southwest is two, and northeast three, and southeast four. Um, and as you can see on this map, South Davis Park is located in zone two or the southwest quadrant. So the additional funds needed for this project come from park development impact fee zone two. Next slide, please. Um, at this point, I will turn the presentation over to Brianna with Carlisle Macy, and she will discuss the project process. Thank you, Emily. And hello, everyone. As Emily said, my name is Brianna Morrison. I'm with Carlisle Macy, and I'm a landscape architect. Uh, Carlisle Macy's office is located just on the other side of Highway 12, uh, within walking distance of South Davis Park. So we're very excited to be working with you on this project. So before we get into the park details, I want to describe the overall goals and objectives we hope to achieve with this project. Also, I'd like to walk you through the project process so you understand all the opportunities you have to participate and contribute to your neighborhood park. Next slide, please. Our first goal, which we are beginning now with this meeting, is to update and amend the existing South Davis Park Master Plan based on community input. As you'll see later, the existing master plan for South Davis Park is fairly simple. It likely doesn't reflect the changing needs and desires of your neighborhood, which is why we'd like to update it. Similar to the example shown on this slide, we'll take your feedback and create a new master plan that will guide future improvements to the park. Next slide, please. Our second project goal, as Emily described, is to get started on those future improvements by designing and constructing a new playground area. Like the example on this slide, we'll be working with you, the community, to gather input, develop ideas, and review playground themes and options. Then we'll select a final concept to be designed and installed. Uh, as Emily also mentioned earlier, the grant that's supporting this project requires the installation be completed by December 2023, so we want to keep this project moving forward and on schedule. Next slide, please. To accomplish these goals, we will all be working collaboratively with each other. City staff and we, the design consultant, will provide you with regular project updates and keep you informed about the process. For example, you may have received a postcard in the mail or maybe saw some signs uh, posted in the park announcing this meeting. 
There will also be posts on social media and in the city's newsletter. So look out for all of those ways to keep informed. Also, the city has set up a website, which I've linked here, where updates will be posted throughout the entire project. On there, you can find copies of this presentation and later a recording of the meeting in case you wanna share it with someone or review the information again later. In this meeting and throughout the process, we're going to share a lot of information uh, as Emily mentioned, because we want you to know what we know. Uh, and we don't know everything, which is where the community comes in. Throughout the master plan process, we are going to solicit and collect all of your feedback and input. You've got a lot of ways to contribute feedback, which I'll discuss in a moment. We'll take it all, review it, and analyze it for common themes and ideas and inspiration. And then we're going to incorporate all of it into a master plan that community can support. Next slide, please. So you, the community, has a huge role in this process. The updated master plan and new playground area will be based on your comments and feedback. We're going to take your ideas and translate them into something that can be designed, but we need you to participate. So the final product we create is reflective of your neighborhood's vision for itself. The best way to accomplish this is for you to be an active participant in the process. Please attend the community meetings or watch the recordings later. Please fill out the polls or the surveys that are posted. Please call or send an email with your comments if that's easiest for you. We value all comments and feedback equally. And often people think only negative comments are worth sharing, but we want to hear your positive comments too. What you like is just as important to share as what you don't like. Now I, I want to bring up some rules for the meeting. I like these best for in-person meetings, but even over Zoom, I think they're re good reminders for us. Uh, everyone should feel encouraged to participate and no one should dominate. You should be positive, not judgmental, and open to new ideas. We should be respectful of each other and share airtime. And remember that all ideas are valid and we value all that feedback equally. We should stay open to new ways of doing things. And most importantly, we should have fun because parks should be fun. Next slide, please. Okay, this is the uh, big picture timeline for this project. So the project has roughly four phases shown here, and we're in the community meetings phase. What's important to note here is that from the meeting today to the future new playground area being constructed is about a year and a half. And we have to finish construction by that 2023 deadline for the grant. Next slide, please. Oh, sorry, it did change. I'm sorry about that. Uh, this is an expanded view of just the master plan process. As I mentioned earlier, the community has a lot of opportunity to provide feedback on the updated master plan. We're hosting a series of three community meetings. The first community meeting is of course right now occurring virtually. Meetings number two and three will also be virtual. Uh, the Sonoma County Library and the Finley Community Center Computer Lab will be available to those who need internet access to attend those meetings. We also have an on-site meeting scheduled for April 9th, and Emily will tell you more about that at the end of the meeting. So at these initial meetings today and on-site, we're collecting your general ideas about the park. At the next community meeting in early summer, we'll present several master plan concepts that we've developed for you to review. Based on your comments, we'll refine the concepts into one draft master plan that will be presented at the last community meeting in late summer. That wraps up the community engagement portion of the project, but it isn't the end of the master plan process. And it also isn't your last opportunity to participate. After community meeting three, we'll take any final community feedback we receive and revise the draft master plan. This revised draft master plan will be presented to the Board of Community Services for their input and ultimately we're trying to get their recommendation of approval to city council. The Board of Community Services can provide comment on the master plan and the community can attend this meeting to provide additional comments or support for the master plan. After that, we'll finalize the master plan and present it to city council for their approval. Again, this is an opportunity for the community to provide additional comments 
and ideally express support for this community driven master plan. Once the master plan is approved by Council, we can move forward to the next phases of the project, which is design and installation of the new playground area. Next slide, please. So you might be wondering, what does a master plan look like? To start, this is the existing South Davis Park master plan. It was prepared in 2003 with some community input, and as you can see, it's pretty simple. It may be hard to read if you have a small screen or you aren't familiar with looking at things in plan view like this, but I, I'll tell you that it basically depicts what the park currently looks like. What's shown on this master plan but not constructed at the park is a second basketball half court at the end of Carrington Street in the bottom right hand corner of this plan, as well as some additional benches, trash containers, and drinking fountains, and the rest of it is pretty much what's installed. Next slide, please. This is an example of an updated and revised master plan recently prepared for Dutch Floor Neighborhood Park. Next slide, please. This is another example. Uh, this one was prepared for the Coffee Neighborhood Park. Next slide, please. And this is another example pre prepared for Kiwanis Springs Community Park. You may have noticed that all of these examples are using colors and graphics to demonstrate layout, materials, and amenities for the parks. They each have le legends that describe the amenities and locate them on the master plan. And we are gonna prepare something similar for this, uh, similar to this for South Davis Park. Next slide, please. Okay, before we get to the fun stuff, we'd like to know more about all of you. So we're going to do a quick poll. Um, host Alyssa, can you explain how the polls will work today? Yes, Brianna, thank you. All poll questions are single or multiple choice. You must answer all questions in order to submit your responses. The submit button is at the very end of the poll. You may need to scroll to the bottom of your screen to find it. If you are completing the poll on your smartphone, you must answer the first question before you can answer the second question. If you are participating in the meeting via a landline, you will not be able to participate in the poll at this time. However, the survey is posted on the project webpage through April 13th. Once everyone has completed the poll and it's been closed, the results will appear immediately and Emily will walk you through the results. Can we move to the next slide, please? Um, thanks. You can go ahead and take the poll um, at your convenience and I will give you a few minutes to do that. It looks like we have about half of our participants who have responded, so we'll give this poll just another couple of minutes.
looks like we have a significant response. So we're going to go ahead and end this poll. And we'll be sharing the results. And I want you to know that the purpose of asking these demographic questions is for us to understand who's participating in the process and who's using the park. Uh, and this information really tells staff and the project team who's missing from the process, who do we need to um, still reach out to. So I very much appreciate um, you sharing this information with us. Um, so the first question is, please select your age range, and it looks like we have representation from everyone uh, 35 and older. So it looks like we um, will need to target some younger age groups for future outreach. Where in the city do you live? 55% um, are coming from the Southwest Quadrant, which um, tells us that um, we're targeting the right audience um, since South Davis is located in the Southwest Quadrant. How did you hear about the meeting today? Um, postcard, 27%, followed by word of mouth and city connections. Oh, 55% signs in the park. Oh, that's yay. <laughs> that's a, an easy and effective way to let people know. Fabulous. How often do you visit South Davis Park? Um, a little over 50% visit at least once a week, every day at least once a week. Fabulous. How long do you stay when you visit? Uh, looks like 30 to 60 minutes is the top vote getter. Um, and then there are about 20% of you who don't visit the park. How far do you travel to get to the park? 55% um, less than five minutes. That means it's meeting the needs of, of the neighborhood, which is great. How do you typically get to the park? 55% uh, walk. Fabulous. Um, thank you so much. Uh, I'll turn it back over to Brianna. Thank you, Emily. Let's go to the next slide, please. Um, it's great to see that we've got people who are using the park uh, regularly and who live very close by uh, attending this meeting. That's really wonderful to hear. Um, so let's get into discussing what we're all here for, which is the park. Next slide, please. So just a little history. Uh, the neighborhood around South Davis Park and the land the park is on has been part of Santa Rosa for a long time. You can see the image on the bottom left is of South Davis Street taken in 1909. Before Highway 101 was constructed, the park was a row of homes similar to what still exists across the street. At one time near the north end of the park, there was a pasta factory called Santa Rosa Paste Company. At South Davis and Earl, there was a church, the Assembly of God Gospel Tabernacle. And next door to that was a hearing center, which you can see an ad for um, on the left, where you could get things like hearing aids and batteries. The neighborhood started to change in the 1940s when a truck route was built along Davis and South Davis streets. This route eventually became Highway 101, which is how the city acquired the parkland in 1964. Around 1968, the highway finished, and a decade later, the sound wall and fencing that exist in the park was installed. Another 10 years later, the park was developed to include some sidewalk and plantings with irrigation. In 2001, the playground was installed. Then in 2003, the master plan we saw earlier was developed. And as we noted, most of that master plan has now been constructed. Next slide, please. While researching the park, I came across some news articles from the Press Democrat that I thought were fun to share. The top left article written in 1941 talks about the new truck route coming through town. There's also a, a little snippet in there about World War II happening. Um, on the bottom right, there's an article about the Santa Rosa Freeway, which is 101. The top right shows a public notice for the sound wall project from 1978. 
And interestingly, on the bottom left from 1953 is a letter to the editor about the need for sidewalks along South Davis Street. So we'll see later that that is still something that's needed. Um, next slide, please. This is an aerial image from 1942 that shows how the neighborhood looked um, right around the time that the truck route was being constructed. Next slide, please. This is the same view from 1968 with 101 constructed. And if you look closely, you can see the pedestrian bridge that's still part of the park now. Next slide, please. And this is a more familiar view from 2013. Next slide, please. So now we're gonna talk about where South Davis Park is located and how that relates to the neighborhoods and the city around it. The park is right in the center of this image, that linear yellow space that you see. It's tucked snug up against Highway 101, which runs along the Eastern property line and Highway 12, which runs along the Northern edge. About three quarters of a mile west of the park is the Smart Track. As I think Emily mentioned, neighborhood parks are meant to serve those generally within a half mile. And a half mile is about a five minute walk. Uh, and that's what we're showing with that complete yellow circle you see around the park. Looking at that, you can see a lot of the area the park is intended to serve is on the east side of 101. The pink dotted line you see is the pedestrian bridge that connects the park to that neighborhood on the east side. Another thing you might notice looking at this plan is there aren't many other parks in this area south of Highway 12. Olive Park and Juilliard Park are close, but to get to them, you have to cross Highway 12 or 101. Next slide, please. This plan really shows how South Davis Park is the only park that most people in the area can conceivably walk to. So the, the image on the right is an overall view, and then the black box is this enlargement on the left. Um, if you're in this area between 101, 12, and the Smart Track, there's only a few places for cars or pedestrians to get out, which are shown with those pink arrows. Olive Street and the pedestrian bridge are the nearest to the park. And even at a half mile or 10 minute walk, which is the larger yellow circle, South Davis Park is still, is still the nearest for anyone in that area. Next slide, please. So moving down the image, we're expanding even farther to a one mile or 20 minute walk shown as the largest yellow circle on the bottom. Um, South Davis is still the nearest from within this area. As you get to the one mile line, Bayer Park is about equidistant from South Davis and you're close to the crossings at Hearn, so you have a few more options. But everything inside that one mile line is nearest to South Davis than anything else. So this little park is really serving a broader area than people might ex uh, expect. Next slide, please. So this view is zoomed in on the park. I'm going to go over it generally, and then we'll take a closer look at each of the areas. We've also rotated our view counterclockwise. So to help you get reoriented, north is to the left now and Highway 101 is on top. So this view is looking east. Uh, South Davis Park is 1.34 acres and very linear, which is unique for a Santa Rosa park. It's named South Davis Park because it's bordered on the entire western edge by South Davis Street. The park starts at the end of Barnett Street, shown on the very left, and it stretches along 101 to just past Theresa Street, which is on the far right of this image. Earl and Carrington Streets in the middle, both dead end at South Davis and the park. The park is one block away from Olive Street, shown on the bottom here, which we saw earlier is one of the ways to cross under Highway 12. The pink lines along South Davis Street represent the sidewalks for the park. A few things to point out is that there isn't a continuous path to the park. There are gaps and the sidewalk ends just north of Theresa Street. The park has three, roughly three main areas. Area one is the north end, which is 
a playground shown in yellow and a picnic and seating area shown as a blue circle next to it. And there's open space with trees on both sides. Area two is the basketball court in the middle shown as a pink square and the pedestrian bridge, which is the purple line crossing the highway. Area three is the second picnic area and the big lawn shown in green on the south end of the park. You might notice the orange lines running all along the eastern park edge. Those are the fences or walls, you can call them either, uh, built by Caltrans. The single orange line on the north end of the park is a corrugated steel fence or wall. It isn't very thick, so traffic on 101 can be a little loud in this area. Starting at the basketball court, the wall changes to masonry block. That wall keeps running south well beyond the park for about a mile. It's much thicker and acts as a sound barrier, so this end of the park is definitely quieter. Overall, the park is in pretty good shape. The amenities are a little mismatched and worn, but the park is overall really nice, and it appears that it's very well cared for by the neighborhood. A few more things to point out here. Uh, the park includes portions of Caltrans right-of-way, so that is not park property. A good way to tell which area of the park is right-of-way is to look at the, where the masonry uh, wall turns back toward 101 at the pedestrian bridge. That strip of land between the lawn edge and the wall where all the trees are is Caltrans property, and so technically not park property. Likewise, the basketball court is really a dead end of Earl Street. It's owned by the city and it's used with the park, but technically it isn't park property. On the east side of 101, where the pedestrian bridge is, there's a city owned vacant lot, which is shown as an orange triangle at the top of this image. That is currently not in the park, but the city is interested in getting feedback from the community on ways to possibly incorporate it in and to enhance it. Next slide, please. So now we're gonna talk uh, about each of the areas a little bit more. So here are the fences or walls that we discussed. The corrugated steel wall on the north end of, end of the park is in rough shape. Uh, it's sort of falling down in one area, which you can see in the left photo. The parks department has contacted Caltrans and tried to get this fixed with no success thus far. The masonry block wall is in good shape. There are vines planted along the face of it. Uh, which that probably really greens it up uh, during spring and summer. Next slide, please. The playground area is in really good shape. For being 20 years old, I have to say the equipment looks really good. Um, there's an area of equipment intended for kids ages 5 to 12 in the first photo. It has slides, monkey bars, talk tubes, and other pretty traditional play features. Uh, there's a bay of four swings with two buckets for little kids and two for older kids. There's also a small playhouse structure for kids ages two to five. That's the third photo. It's pretty small and sort of tucked into the corner closer to the steel wall. Most of the surface scene for the playground is sand, uh, and there are rubber surface pathways to the equipment for accessibility. When the new play area is, in, is installed, the replacement surfacing will be engineered wood chips called Fibar. It looks like mulch, uh, but it's specially manufactured to cushion any falls and also to provide an accessible surface for wheelchairs. Next slide, please. There are two areas with picnic tables on each side of the basketball court. Both are in open areas under the trees and they're very comfortable spaces to be in. The picnic tables don't all match, and a few have some damage on top. Um, there are accessible tables located on the concrete pads, and then regular tables located in the grassy spaces. Next slide, please. The park has several picnic areas, but only two benches, shown here. Both are near the playground, and I suspect people are using the picnic tables for seating uh, for these areas also. Near those areas are some metal trash cans and a concrete drinking fountain. Next slide, please. The basketball court is a half court with asphalt paving and striping with a typical backboard and hoop. As I mentioned earlier, this is really a part of Earl Street, which is why you see curb and gutter around the court perimeter. 
Uh, cars can't get through here though, because there are big bollards at the South Davis street end. One interesting thing to note is that there are drainage holes in the sound wall. So water from the highway side flows through and along the, the gutter in the court to get to the South Davis street. Next slide, please. I mentioned the gaps in the sidewalk earlier, and these are some images to demonstrate what I'm talking about. On Barnett, there are some very large trees and a power pole that prevent the sidewalk from connecting there. Uh, at the end of the basketball court where the bollards are, there isn't a sidewalk connecting the playground area to the lawn area. The concrete you see to the right of the bollards in the second image um, is a concrete swale that directs stormwater toward an inlet. I'm sure people walk on it all the time, but it technically isn't an accessible path. The other sidewalk in the park is in good shape. It meanders along um, the edge of the street through the trees and the lawn, and it's very pleasant to walk on. Next slide, please. There are several open areas in the park. I mentioned before the spaces around the playground and picnic areas. Those are tucked under the tree canopies and it's very comfortable to be there. There's of course the long linear lawn it's about 450 feet long and is irrigated. And there's also a natural area at the end of the park um, that's sort of left to be kind of wild. Uh, besides the trees and the lawn, uh, there's really no other major vegetation in the park. Next slide, please. When it comes to the trees, there are some great ones and some not so great ones. Along the corrugated wall, there are a lot of eucalyptus trees. Uh, they provide some extra sense of security since the highway is right there, but they aren't all in great shape. Uh, some have been cut back, leaving stumps like in the first picture, and others are dead or dying. You can see in that second picture that they are really close to the wall. Uh, elsewhere in the park, there are oaks and redwoods and other various trees that look really good. And most of the trees between the stone wall and the lawn are within the Caltrans uh, right of way. Next slide, please. The pedestrian bridge is a major feature in the park. It's been there since the beginning of the highway and it's the pedestrian connection to the other side of the highway and all the neighborhoods and businesses there. The bottom right picture is the entry from within the park at the basketball court. The top right picture is the exit on the east side of 101. It's this sort of open concrete area and it feels a little like a forgotten space. I know there's a new climbing gym going up very close by. Um, and there are all these vines and weeds growing up the fencing, and just out of frame to the left is a car wash that may or may not be used. Um, out of frame to the right is the vacant lot that we, that again is that kind of orange triangle. There's a better picture of what that looks like on the bottom left. You can see that it's sort of overgrown and empty. The most going on there is people really parking along the edges. If the community is interested, there's a great opportunity to enhance this space and make it part of the park experience and the pedestrian bridge connection experience. So having both ends of the bridge beautified would be really nice for people who use it. Next slide, please. The communities on both sides of 101 have beautiful murals and artwork all over. Uh, so it's nice to see that that carries into the park. On the pedestrian bridge, these murals by uh, Art Start show two street vendors and a train representing Santa Rosa. If this is something you wanna see more of in the park, please give us that feedback. Public art is something we can definitely include in the master plan. Next slide, please. These are a few other items you might see in the park. If we're talking about signage, we usually mean park rule signs and other informational signage. I mentioned the bollards at the basketball court. Those are these big white pipes filled with concrete that have reflective tape on them. There are some wooden bollards by the playground and some landscape boulders on the south end. Uh, the park also has a lot of lighting and this is just a picture of what the lighting looks like along South Davis. Next slide, please. Okay, that was a lot of information. So uh, now we're gonna move into the part of the meeting where you start to give us your feedback. First, we're gonna go through some slides and have you interact with us by answering polling questions. And then after that, we'll open up 
uh, public the public comment and Q and A. Next slide, please. On these next slides, I'm going to read through the questions and explain the answer choices to you. Host Brown will bring the poll up. You'll have time to answer. And when she closes it, I'll review the results before we move on to the next question. Next slide, please. Okay, so question one here is, what is the primary reason you visit South Davis Park? We'd like you to select just one. Uh, is it taking your kids or grandkids to play? Is it just to spend time outside and enjoy nature? You could be uh, sitting and reading a book or walking along the path. Um, is it to walk your dog? Is it to get some exercise? Is it socialization uh, with maybe people outside of your family? Is it neighborhood or family events like a birthday party or some kind of event where you might bring food to the tables? Uh, or is it mostly to use the pedestrian overpass to access the neighborhoods and businesses on the east side of Highway 101? So the poll is open and we'll give you a few moments to answer the question. Looks like we have about half of our attendees doing the response. We'll leave this poll open for just a few more moments. All right, so we have the results here. It looks like it's about evenly split between taking kids to play, spending time outside and enjoying nature, walking the dog and neighborhood or family events. Uh, we've got one person who says it's to use the pedestrian bridge and then three people who don't visit the park and one other. So if you answer other, we would love to hear that in the public input part so we can get more information from you. All right, next slide, please. Question two is, do you use the pedestrian overpass to access neighborhoods, parks, and services on the east side of the highway? Uh, yes, I use it regularly. Yes, I use it occasionally, or no, I do not use the pedestrian bridge. And that poll is open for you to answer. Looks like we have all participants who have answered. I'll go ahead and close this poll. Okay, so let's see, we've got five people who say, yes, I use it regularly, two that use it occasionally, and six that do not use the bridge at all. So that's good. We've got uh, quite a few people here that use the bridge semi-regularly at least. Okay, next slide, please. So this question is about the existing park features and amenities that we've reviewed earlier. And we want to know which features do you appreciate the most about South Davis Park? And we'd like you to pick your top three. So uh, benches or seating areas, picnic tables, the sidewalks, playground equipment, the basketball half court, the lawn, any and all of the trees, the public art and murals, or the pedestrian bridge. So again, you can pick your top three.
We're just waiting on a few more participants and then we'll end this poll. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and close this poll, thank you. All right, I see immediately uh, people really value the trees, that's great. It's sort of evenly split, looks like between the public art, the basketball court and playground equipment. Uh, quite a few people appreciate the picnic tables and We've got some appreciation for the lawn and on the lower end, the sidewalks and benches, which that makes sense. Uh, and definitely some appreciation for the pedestrian bridge there. But I see a lot of people look like they're, they're using the picnic tables, they're using uh, the amenities that are, that are there and they're uh, enjoying the nature. Okay, thank you. Next slide, please. So for this question, we want to know what new features and amenities you'd like to see. We're representing a few ideas here. And if you have other ideas, we want you to share those with us too in the public input process. Um, so what new, new features would make South Davis Park an even better park? Uh, choice one is barbecue grills, which you may have seen at other parks located next to picnic tables. Those are great for getting friends or family together outside so you can cook a meal. Uh, choice two is improved sidewalk connectivity. If you think having better sidewalks and pedestrian access to the park would improve it, we want to know that. Choice three is other sports or game features. We've got the basketball court, but would you like to see other things like chess tables, bocce courts, exercise stations, etc.? Choice four is an off-leash dog park. This would be a fenced area where you can take your dog off their leash and let them run around. Choice five is a community garden. A community garden typically has several planter beds with irrigation hookups and it, individuals or families can take responsibility for one of the beds and plant vegetables or flowers. Uh, usually the community makes a group that manages the garden and then keeps the city updated on any issues. Choice four, I'm sorry, choice six is a pollinator garden or other plantings. We discussed how the only vegetation at the park is trees and lawn. So if you'd like to see some other plantings there, we'd like to know that. And choice seven is um, maybe there's a unique feature not found in any other Santa Rosa park that you want to present to us. And we would love to hear your ideas. So the poll is open. And there's of course an other choice um, if, your idea is not represented in the poll. And we'd like you to choose your top three. Sorry, I didn't mention that earlier. We're just waiting on a few more respondents, then we'll go ahead and close this poll. Okay, gonna go ahead and end this poll. Okay. Uh, a lot of people interested in other sports and game features. Uh, that's the top response there with uh, almost 70%. That's followed by uh, an off-leash dog park at 46%. And then we've got improved sidewalk connectivity and pollinator gardens and plantings at 38%. Let's see, then next would be barbecue grills at 31% and community garden at 31%. And then it looks like a few of you have some other ideas for unique features um, or other things. And we would love to hear that. 
So thank you, this is great feedback. Okay, next slide, please. So I'm happy to see a bunch of you were interested in other sports and gaming features. Um, so we asked about that in the last poll, and now we'd like to hear more about what kinds of other sports and gaming amenities you'd be interested in. Um, so what other sports and gaming features would you like to see in the park? We'd like you to uh, pick your top three. Choice one is table tennis or ping pong. This image is from Coffee Neighborhood Park, where there are two tables, and people bring their own balls and paddles to the park to play. Choice two is cornhole, or some people call it simply bags. Concrete boards can be installed, so you can bring your own bags to play. Choice three is chess or checker tables, which you see in a lot of parks, and you would bring your own uh, pieces to use that. Choice four is skateboarding features. There are ways to incorporate single skatable elements that are fun for people with skateboards, rollerblades, and scooters to practice on. Choice five is exercise stations. So exercise stations can be spread out along a path or they can be grouped in an area. And there are many types of equipment, some simple like a chin-up bar and some more advanced like what's shown in this picture. Choice six is bocce or patank courts. These are usually areas of decomposed granite with an edge where you can play the games informally. Choice seven is ball wall, which essentially is using a wall as a backboard of sorts to bounce a ball. You can play games like handball or practice soccer, tennis, and volleyball without a partner. Choice eight is sidewalk games. An example of this would be if we were to change the striping on the basketball court to include other games like four square, hopscotch, a maze you could walk along or similar items. Uh, choice nine is none of these if you aren't interested in it. And choice 10 is other if you have ideas you'd like to share with us. And again, we would like um, you to pick your top three. Okay, we're going to go ahead and close this poll. Okay, so top response is exercise stations. And then we've got following that ball wall, a lot of people are interested in that. Uh, it looks like the rest is sort of equidistant or equally uh, distributed between cornhole or bags chess or checker tables, um, bocce courts, skateboarding, and table tennis. Um, the, on the lower end, we've got sidewalk games and no sports. So definitely um, a lot of love for the, the active amenities there. Thank you. Okay, next slide, please. Our next question is about playgrounds, since that's going to be the uh, first thing that's actually installed in the park. So we wanna know what other types of play equipment or features would you like to see in the newly developed play area? And we'd like you to pick your top three. Uh, choice one is climbing features like boulders, ladders, nets, monkey bars, uh, any of those kind of things. Choice two is spinning features, which can come in a bunch of different shapes and sizes. This is just one example. Choice three is a group swing, which unlike a single swing like you've got in the park now, this would allow multiple kids to swing together, usually on something like a big saucer uh, as shown in the picture. Choice four is slides, a playground classic. Choice five is play mounds or hills. These can be covered in play surfacing like in the picture, or they can be more natural with grass or even artificial turf. 
Choice six is sand. So since we're going to be replacing the playground surfacing, um, which is currently sand with fibar, um, you won't have that big sand area, but we can still include sand play in the new design. And choice seven is a zip line, which allows kids to hold on to a rope and a step and then slide along a cable between platforms, which can be really fun. Choice eight would be none of the above uh, if you don't like anything that you see. And choice nine is other if you've got some ideas for us that aren't on here. So the poll is open. And again, we'd like you to put your uh, top three. I see a question that I'm just going to go ahead and answer if that's okay. The, will a new play equipment be replacing or supplementing existing play structures? It will be replacing. And we'll also ask or share that question again um, during the live Q&A, so. Thanks, Emily. We'll keep this open for another couple of uh, moments for the few remaining participants to provide their entries. Okay, we are going to go ahead and close this poll. Okay. So at the top, it looks like climbing features, swings and slides. Uh, a lot of people like 70%, 50% really went for those. Uh, a lot of interest in the zip line, uh, which is great. We have a long linear park and, and not so much interest uh, in this survey on the group swing, spinning features or sand. And looks like we have someone who's got none of the above. Okay. Thank you guys, good to know. Next slide, please. So um, we can get really focused on the details when we talk about a park and a master plan, but we also want to keep the big picture in mind. So we're gonna ask you what goals should be kept in mind while envisioning the future of South Davis Park. We'd like you to pick your top three. So uh, keeping the park safe, keeping the park clean and well-maintained, creating spaces for nature and passive recreation, things like meditation and yoga, uh, being out in nature, uh, creating spaces for active recreation, like sports and the exercise stations, creating spaces for the neighborhood to meet and socialize, creating a better playground, uh, creating a space that's welcome and welcoming and accessible to all, maintaining and enhancing access to the neighborhood's parks and services on the east side of Highway 1 or keeping the park as is. So again, we want you to pick your top three and these are sort of the, the big picture ideas that you think are most important as we develop this park master plan. We'll leave this poll open for a couple more moments for those final participants to make their entries. And we'll go ahead and close this poll. Okay, 
Let's see, keeping the park safe, keeping the park clean and well-maintained, creating space for passive recreation and nature and active recreation for nature are all kind of right up there at the top. Uh, that's followed by creating spaces for the neighborhood to meet and socialize. And then on the lower end, uh, creating a better playground, welcoming and accessible to all uh, the pedestrian bridge and keeping the park as is. So that's some good feedback. Next slide, please. So that is the end of the poll as part of this um, Zoom meeting. We will have these questions also available on a survey online. So for other people in the community who might not be in this meeting uh, to, to put their answers in. So the, the, the weight of the answers might switch a little bit um, as we get more feedback. Um, but now what we're gonna do is switch to taking your public comments. So these are some questions we have for you, and we'd love to hear your answers and your other feedback. Uh, what are your ideas for making this park great? Do you have anything else you want to share to help shape the future of South Davis Park? And do you have any questions for us? With that, I'm going to uh, say next slide, please, and hand this over to Emily. Thank you, Brianna. Um, we will now take live questions and public comment. And after we do live ones, then I'll read aloud and we'll respond to the couple of questions that we received in that Q&A feature during the presentation. So um, if you wish to make a comment via Zoom, please raise your hand. If you are dialing, dialing in via telephone, be it a smartphone or a landline, please dial nine or star nine to raise your hand. Madeline, can you please explain how public comment will be heard today? Thank you, Emily. A countdown timer will appear for the convenience of the speaker and viewers. The first speaker will be acknowledged and invited to speak. Please make sure to unmute yourself when you are invited to do so. Your microphone will be muted at the end of that countdown or at the conclusion of your comment. If you are participating in the meeting from the Spanish channel in Zoom, we have an interpreter on standby on the English channel to assist during your public comment. If you wish to ask a question or provide input, please be sure to pause throughout your comments to allow for interpretation. Those using interpreter support will be afforded additional time for your comments. For Spanish speakers, at the time you hear your name called, turn off the Spanish channel to make your public comment. The icon may now look like a circle with an ES in the middle and the word Spanish underneath. We have a hand raised by Corrine. I will go ahead and unmute your mic. Corrine, do you see the timer for public comment? Got it, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. We do have some feedback coming on our end, Corrine. Sure. Why do you have two right? Because okay. yes, if you turn off that second device that is connected to the web, yeah, they're or... turning it off right now. Wonderful. Okay, well, go ahead and identify yourself for public record, and you'll Hold come on, up let me turn uh, the volume up a little bit. Okay, go the other way. Okay, what was that again? Uh, please identify yourself for the public record and your timer begins now. My name is Corrine Einong and I live on South Davis Street. I've been here for 37, almost 38 years. And um, the we um, normally go and uh, we clean up the park when uh, when the city hasn't come around hasn't come around, so we the kids will go out and pick up trash and you know and get rid of stuff and talk to the park um, personnel. Um, we were looking um, for maybe a little bit more lighting because it it is pretty still even though it's got the couple of lights, it still has a lot a lot of dark spots where we get a lot of riffraff you know where we have to call the police to come out. Um, 
people drinking, do, you know, doing other things. So, you know, our idea was if at all possible, if they could have some uh, better lighting. I, we did notice, or I did notice that, you know, um, you were um, thinking of adding uh, the, for barbecues. And I think that's a really good idea. A lot of people don't know about South Davis Street Park. They do drive, you know, sometimes when they're in the area and they just happen to come onto South Davis Street, they're like really shocked that there's a park there. So sometimes during the summer, that park gets, you know, probably just as loaded as Howard Street. I mean, Howard, uh, Howard Park, sorry. So um, we've watched it grow. You know, we have neighbors who actually, um, who actually help build the park and, you know, and got the original swing sets and everything, which was from an old uh, Howard Park. And um, God rest his soul, Jack Zimmer, he was a wonderful neighbor and he would tell us all the stories about how the park was created. Uh, one thing that he did say was he was whole, uh, uh, really wanted um, the park to be called um, after uh, Bill Montgomery. So um, I was thinking uh, also some kind of uh, fencing, you know, to try, not to keep the riffraff out, I, I think a lot of things that you guys showed, you know, in your pictures were great, great ideas. So, to you know, that that's what I see. And I can't wait for it to happen. Um, my younger kids and nieces and nephews helped create this park and got feedback. You know, there was no Zoom, but somebody did come out and talk to the kids. So um, a couple of my uh, nieces and nephews and um, my younger son, Anthony, they all helped pick out all the stuff. They sat down with the book and had the benches put up and stuff like that. So um, I think it's a really good idea what you guys are uh, going to create. Thank you. Thank you, Corrine. The next speaker that we have hand raised for is a Margaret. Again, if I have just called your name and you are in need of an interpreter assistance for public comment, please turn off the Spanish channel to make your public comment. Margaret, I have allowed your ability to speak. Can you see the timer on your screen? Yes, I see it. Um, I'm relative, I live on South Davis as well. Um, and I'm relatively new to the neighborhood. The main thing to me that, that stands out is that metal wall. And I know you guys said that that belongs to Caltrans, but the other end with the concrete block with the ivy on it looks so nice. And then the metal wall has the big hole in it and the dying eucalyptus trees in front of it. And it would just be nice if there was any way to fix that up, even paint a mural on it and patch the hole in it. Um, and just more greenery, I think. It's a really nice park. And it, I think Ms. Ainong's right about more lighting would be nice. And my mom said more seating as well. So that was it. Thank you, Margaret. We appreciate your comment. The next hand raised is for Jim Pelismanic. Jim, I have given you the ability to unmute your microphone. Can you see the timer on your screen? Oh, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Thank you. Yes, Please. I can see the clock. Thank you very much. Thank you. My name is Jim Telesmanic, and I live right around the corner from the park. And uh, I was part of the designing of that park 20 years ago. And uh, the main thing, I, I love your new ideas. I love them. I think it's fantastic. The great ideas, uh, the, the barbecue, as long as you got concrete around it, it's fantastic. But can we save as much as the playground as possible? It's only 20 years old. Uh, the only thing that doesn't work on it is the, uh, the speaker thing that has a pipe that goes underground and make it talk to each other from the top to the bottom. But that doesn't work because they filled it up with sand, I guess. But the rest of it is still like new. We use it all the time. My granddaughter goes over there and loves it. Uh, 
So can we save any of that playground? <laughs> That's what I'm concerned about. We spent 104,000 on, on what's there. Um, and I know money counts and I know you guys got to spend it, but there's a lot of that green area down there. The, the, that zip line would be fantastic down in that green area. Uh, we play volleyball down there when we do the camp out. We haven't done the camp out since this pandemic started. And uh, that I'd like to get back into, which I don't know if we'll ever have to be able to. But anyway, uh, I guess that was the main thing. It's really, really nice that we are doing something. And uh, I just feel bad about tearing out what's there <laughs> in the playground equipment. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Jim. The next speaker we have is Susan. Susan, I have given you permissions to unmute your microphone. Can you see the timer on your screen? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Please identify yourself for public record and your timer begins now. My name is Susan Isham and I live on South Davis Street. Um, I enjoy the park daily. I look out onto the park. I agree with the last speaker. I am concerned about tearing out perfectly good equipment, which the um, architect said at the beginning that it's in good shape. I hate the idea of creating more waste and um, that might be put to something else. As a resident, uh, I would love to see, so I know it's not entirely park related, but it could be um, some parking, like three hour parking limit with no overnight parking like they did on Olive Street. As a resident here, when people park on both sides of the street, all of a sudden South Davis becomes a one lane road and we do have a lot of pedestrians and a lot of kids on bikes and scooters and it gets a little precarious when it's so narrow that's number one number two um the area underneath the pedestrian overcrossing has been um, a site for uh, unfortunate incidences we had a young man um, Anyway, it would be great if we could put some large rocks down there. I saw in the master plan something about putting a fence, cyclone fence all around the, the, oh, the bottom of the pedestrian overcrossing, something much cheaper and a little bit more eco-friendly. We just put a bunch of big rocks in there so people can't camp out and um, it's less uh, hospitable to overnight guests. Um, other than that, I do like the idea of what's what we're doing. Let's just use our money wisely and not tear down good stuff. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. Are there any more attendees who would like to make a public comment? Please raise your hand. It looks like we have one more hand raised and resident Batcat, I have gone ahead and unmuted your microphone. Can you see the timer on your screen? Again, if I have just called your name and you are in need of interpreter assistance for public comment, please turn off the Spanish channel to make your public comment. And we are currently calling on resident Fat Cat. Fat Cat, are you able to state your comment? I will go ahead and mute your microphone for now as we have another resident wanting to speak, um, but we'll come back to you after their public comment. Our next public comment is from resident Wolfbane61. I have gone ahead and unmuted or given you the opportunity to unmute your microphone. Do you see the timer on your screen? Yes. Wonderful. Okay, go ahead and state your name for public records and your timer oh. begins now. Okay, uh, my name is Bain uh, Merritt, M-E-R-R-I-T-T. -T. <clears throat> I'm at the corner of Earl and South Davis, so I look directly across at the picnic tables, um, and a little to my left is the half court and, uh, and also the walkover. <clears throat> um, I agree that lighting would be a real nice thing. More lighting to just uh, keep it a little safer at night. And um, 
and uh, I am, um, but I'm not in favor of having much put in front of my house uh, as far as um, it's such a narrow strip of lawn and it's, um, and it's lovely to look out at and it's, it's, there's people walking their dogs all the time. It's lovely for them to walk the dogs, but I would really not be in favor of a dog park across the street. Um, I also, um, oh, what else was it? Um, yeah, I, everything else. I think the playground's great. I'm glad it's down there. And, um, you know, and just tidying up. They, I think the city does a wonderful job of maintaining the park keeping, uh, picking up the garbage. There's lots of garbage gets left there, but uh, they are very uh, diligent in picking it up and, and keeping the park in good shape. But I, um, I, I like the way it is right now and wouldn't um, be in favor of too much being put across the street from me in the, in the uh, narrow part of the park. So there's my input. Thank you very much, Bain. We appreciate that. Okay. Okay, we're going to go ahead and try again for resident fat cat. I have given you permissions to unmute your microphone. Can we test your audio for your public comment, please? It seems that we are still unable to hear you. So if you're able to go ahead and place your public comment into the question and answer section located at the bottom of your screen, and we will be able to have Emily read it back and respond. Emily, at this time, there are no further hands raised for public comment. Thank you, Madeline. Um, I did want to take a moment and address the question they're concerned about the playground equipment and I'll talk a little bit and then pass it along also to Jen for um, any anything that I've missed but um, uh, the playground currently doesn't meet the playground standards safety standards the swings all the playground equipment is just too close to one another um, like the the fall zones for each area need to be larger um, for each section of playground equipment also, the sand surface surfacing is um, not accessible, ADA accessible. Um, there's also no drainage under the playground equipment. Um, and I mean, I haven't been there in a rain. Maybe you guys can speak to um, whether or not that is an issue, if flooding is an issue in the park currently um, during the rainy season, um, but that is an, an issue. Um, and we also need to um, make the playground more accessible from the actual, actually from the sidewalk. Um, so those are a few of the reasons that it needs to be uh, changed out. Um, do you have uh, other information to add, Jen? Thanks, Emily. I think you you covered a lot of the basics. Um, the while the playground looks good. Uh, and we're super excited that the community was actively involved in the, in the playground. We want you to be actively involved in the new playground as well. It's due for an update and we did receive grant funding for it right now. So it'd be about two years before we would normally replace this playground. Uh, but we were very excited that we received this grant funding for this project. And uh, we do have a limited amount of time to spend these funds here. Um, and although it looks good, it does need to be it does, does need to be brought up to current standards um, so that it's practical for all types of uh, children using the playground. And so we we totally get it. It looks cool, but we we just need a little reset and an update. And we we really want to work with this community. If there are folks that are uh, extra interested, we can uh, work with you specifically. You can tell us that in your survey feedback. Um, or just give a call to Emily and we can work with you to get you further involved in the playground part of it if you'd like to be. So hopefully that helps um, a little bit with that. Um, and I think I think that's about, yeah, I think Emily and I, I think that's about it. So thanks. Thank you, Jen. Okay, I am going to read aloud the questions in the Q&A feature um, 
now. And then if that if, if any of this sparks um, more questions or feedback, um, we'll open it back up for um, any last comments live made live. Um, so the first question um, was, where is the proposed site of the relocated play structures? Um, and our goal is to replace it, or we're going to look to replace it where the current structure is. But if there's not enough room there, then we'll look to other parts of the park um, to put the playground equipment. Um, and we can, the next question was, can we get three hour parking and no overnight parking like Olive Street? Um, and we can certainly look into that. Definitely feels very narrow um, driving in there when there's, park. I mean, people park on both sides of the street. Um, the next question is, will new play equipment be replacing or su supplementing um, existing play structures? And Brianna answered that a little while ago and it will be replacing. Um, the next question was, if the play structure is in good shape, why replace it? Couldn't the money be used for other aspects of improvement? I don't like the idea of creating more waste. Um, thank you so much for that. And uh, we just spoke about that. Um, the next comment is, yes, all in favor of the city cleaning up and incorporating the triangular area on the corner of South A and Earl Street into South Davis Park. Please and thank you. Um, the next comment is all excellent and thoughtful public comments. Um, the next one is keep as much as possible of the old playground equipment. It's only 20 years old. Um, and finally, as there's very limited parking for residents, I sometimes have to park blocks away from my house because there's not enough parking. Please don't change the parking. Thank you. Um, and with that, um, I'd like to open it back up. Is there any last thoughts, um, or questions, or comments that you have for us before we move on to our next steps? There are no further hands raised for live public comment, Emily. Thank you, Madeline. Okay, well, with that then, um, if you can go to the next slide, please. And we will discuss next steps. Next slide, please. So tonight was community meeting number one. Um, as Brianna stated earlier, a recording of tonight's meeting, as well as the presentation, will be available at the city's park project webpage for South Davis Neighborhood Park. And that will be available early next week. Um, and also, as Brianna mentioned, there's a more detailed survey um, than what than the poll you participated in tonight. Um, with write-in options available um, on the city's website. And that will be available until April 13th. Um, we'd love for you to share all this information with your friends, family, neighbors, um, because the more participation really, it makes the project better. Um, our next meeting will be on Saturday, April 9th, and it will be in person in the park. So we would love to see many of your faces there and meet you in person and, and talk to you and get to know you a little bit better. Um, and the park, as most of you know, is at 712 South Davis Street. Um, there will be Spanish interpretation available um, at the meeting, and there will be paper copies of the survey. Um, we are going to um, be requesting social distancing and or masking um, during the meeting. Over the next week, um, I will be provide well, Tonight, I'm going to go provide Percy Malone, um, one of your neighbors, um, with flyers about the April 9th meeting and the survey. So um, you will probably have one of those on your door in the next week. Um, and also, as Brianna mentioned, the remaining meetings will be virtual after the in-person meeting on the 9th. Um, but we will be providing opportunities um, at the Finley, commu at Finley Community Park. We'll be opening up the computer lab for anyone who um, needs access. Um, and also the Sonoma County Library branches are all open till 8 p.m. on Tuesday and Wednesday evenings. So we'll plan to have a meeting on a Wednesday night um, in June. And I also just want to um, 
say that the, the second meeting um, I mean, the second virtual meeting in June is kind of a, a big one. That's where we'll be taking all the feedback that we've received from tonight and the surveys and the in-person meeting. And we'll be creating three draft concept plans um, and bringing those forward um, for, for you to weigh, weigh in on. Um, and that's really the time for you to tell us that, hey, yes, you did hear us, or no, you didn't hear us. And here's my, our favorite parts of these plans, of the plans. and. Um, so um, tell other, other people, um, and I hope you can come back um, in June for that meeting. So um, next slide, please. Um, and in the meantime, if you have any questions or comments, um, or just want to tell me more about the neighborhood, um, please feel free to give me a call um, or send me an email. I'd be happy to talk with you and get to know you better. Um, and with that, I would just like to express my appreciation for all of you being here tonight. We know that you have very busy lives and could be doing many other things. Um, and so it's, it, it means so much to us for you to be here. So with that, good night um, and take care. And we hope to see you in the park on the night.